Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Mark Toulouse, Chairman of Wix and Co-Founder and CEO of Mangrove Capital Partners, having invested in over 125 companies, including Skype, to discuss the lasting effects COVID is having on Silicon Valley and investors. Mark, it's great to meet with you. Welcome to Trade Talks. Jill, it's a pleasure to be here and thanks for having me today. You got it. And how have VC priorities and checklists for potential investments changed and will they continue to change in coming years? Look, our industry is an ever evolving industry. So a lot of things change and at the same time, a lot doesn't, right? Fundamentally, we're looking for companies that have big ambitions around the globe. And if COVID taught us anything, it is that the total addressable market has just gotten bigger. You know, the simple belief that an internet company can execute around the world. And so I think in the past when we thought the TAM was the US or Europe, I think now, frankly, COVID's given us the hope that TAM is global, truly. How can international startups approach breaking into the American market and vice versa? Well, I think Europe, Asia to the U.S. is a little complex. The U.S. is a pretty busy market in itself. And, and I think the mindset is a bit like what we have in Israel, I think. is Wherever you decide to start your company, you need to decide that you're going to have a global perspective on anything. And that global perspective is in, in all directions, right? And so, again, it's back to how big is the market, how big is this globe. For many businesses, the TAM is truly the 8 billion people on this planet. And so I think what really matters is having that open-mindedness to go in and, and think that way. And speaking of open-mindedness, do you think the VC community is making inroads when it comes to diversity? You're not fast enough, right? Obviously, uh, things need to go a lot faster. And I think there's a lot of will. Um, and, and, you know, these things tend to be progressive as opposed to be immediate. And so I'm happier than I was last year, not as happy as I think I'll be in five years. And so we continue to push that, 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 that narrative that, you know, the more different perspectives we have, the better the industry is going to be, the better companies you're going to be building. So I have a lot of positive hopes for the future. What industries do you think will see the most venture backing in 2021? I think healthcare undoubtedly is going to be the place where, where, where people see we can have a huge change, right? Just look at the U.S., 17% uh, of GDP goes towards uh, healthcare, and, and frankly, it's not the best healthcare in the world, and, 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 and our population is getting older. And so unless technology comes along, and makes a material change to the current model, I think we're going to have trouble. So I like these types of problems where there really is no alternative than to push change. And so I think we're going to start seeing massive push into that space. We already have, but it's going to be for me, the, dec the next decade is a decade of tech healthcare. Why will platforms like Wix, Shopify, and others only continue to be bullish on growing the future of online businesses? We can clearly tell from the earnings results that e-commerce is having a big impact. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, COVID proved one thing is that we're all happy when we're staying at home to spend our disposable income in any way we can. And of course, e-commerce gave us the opportunity to shop as much as we wanted online. You know, Wix is more of a horizontal platform. And so we have e-commerce as one of our businesses, but we have a number of other businesses online. And as, 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 the, as the economy start opening up, these other businesses are beginning to see them flourish. And so I like the power of, of a horizontal platform because it gives you the opportunity in the case of e-commerce to, to just completely flourish. But now that the economies are, are opening up to do other things too. So, you know, what we thought was going to happen in five, seven years is going to happen in three, four years. Years. And that's just the power of what's happening is, is the internet has changed. It's, it's a fundamental change in everything that we do from being a yoga teacher to selling clothes online to all sorts of other things out there. And Mark, finally, how will the crackdown on big tech impact the future of both the American and international tech scenes? Well, you know, I, 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 I tech has driven such tremendous change that, that I think, uh, we, we do need also to have a bit of a conscience in how we as tech, as the tech industry behave. And, and I think, you know, companies are not great self-policers. And so there is going to be a crackdown. I have no doubt about that. And I fundamentally think it's going to be good for us when I think from a morality perspective. As a business perspective, I'm a little less uh, hopeful because government crackdowns aren't good for anybody. But we are going to see crackdowns in specific sectors and specific areas and more regulation coming because we don't do a good job of self-policing ourselves. And so as a result, we need a conscience out there that helps us think in the better ways possible. And we do a lot of that at Wix, for instance. Um, but of course, the Internet is big and there's a lot of ugly sides of the Internet that need that need that need to help. 
All right, Mark, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.